Guy Pacha with the weekly Pele report. I'm here uh, near the town of Dia on the island of Mallorca, Spain, and I cannot believe how beautiful. May 2nd, 2018, and the wonder, awe, and majesty of nature never ceases to amaze me. I'm going to try to walk down this path here <laughs> while I give you the aspects because I just love these paths. I haven't been down here. I don't exactly know where it goes, but I do know that the moon, yeah, Sagittarius, moon in Sagittarius is adventure. Foreign lands, foreign journeys, foreign ideas, the new element, the expansion of consciousness into the foreign unknown. Yes, constantly adding to our bag of tricks. And she stays in Sagittarius until Friday. And then goes into Capricorn. And yes, she joins Black Moon Lilith. She joins Saturn on Friday. The moon conjuncts Saturn. Saturday, she comes along, trines the sun, squares Mercury, conjuncts with Black Moon Lilith, conjuncts with Pluto before she moves into Aquarius on Sunday yeah and on Sunday then the Sun comes into sextile to Neptune very very beautiful yeah and this is really something now because on Monday is really Sunday Monday Tuesday is when the aspects really start happening here okay Mercury squares Pluto on Monday Venus squares Neptune on Monday on Tuesday, the sun opposes Jupiter. We got a whole lot going on. Yeah. Throughout this whole week, though, you know, Mars is in the late degrees of Capricorn. And it is really kind of square to Uranus coming through the final degrees of Aries going into Taurus. So we're going to have a Mars squaring Uranus coming up here for a while. And also that retrograde Jupiter over there in Scorpio is trining Neptune. Yeah, and that's happening for quite some time too. Yeah, for a couple of weeks here. So I'm going to incorporate, you know, all of these aspects. They're not really exact this week, but there's a whole lot going on here over a period of time and of course you know we're all in this process so let me just find a nice spot to uh, you know hang out talk to you about this okay all right I mean the cool thing about this is I can do a funky report and the scenery is so awesome that you can watch it anyway <laughs> This place is drop-dead gorgeous. I mean, I don't like to, you know, go back to the same place twice, but if I'm going to go back someplace, it's going to be here. You cannot believe how gorgeous this island is. There are so many stone walls here that I was told it was likened to the Wall of China. They put so much work into making these stone walls. Maybe I'll put some pictures, you know, at the end of the terraces. And, you know, there's no mortar, you know, there's nothing holding them together. They are chiseled out, you know, to like fit together, you know, for thousands of years. I mean, it's phenomenal. It's very Capricorn. <laughs> Solid rock, earth, lasting forever, okay? I put the, the man-made cathedral okay last week and now you know just even mother nature look at that rock behind me over there it looks like it's floating there's another one right down below here it's a really phenomenal maybe I'll even pick this up check this out now look at that thing I mean is that amazing or what I hope it's not too windy for you I know people complain about this stuff Anyway, I'm not used to moving the camera in the middle of a report. Now, I, I could get all screwed up here, but, you know, with all this pressure and tension, I got to have some fun with this stuff, or I'm not going to keep doing it. <laughs> okay, now, <clears throat> let's get serious. This is a serious time. We've got Saturn, Black Moon, Lilith, Mars, and Pluto 
all moving through Capricorn. Yeah, this is the sign, and Saturn is the planet of karma. It's payback season. Okay, you've got the new moon, and now you got the third quarter moon coming through there. And the third quarter of the moon, okay, also has to do with what? What goes around comes around, and we are part of a larger cycle. Let's look at the, just the monthly lunar cycle. We had the new moon conjunct, right, Uranus, sun, moon, Uranus, in late degrees of Aries. That started it, okay? And now we just had a full moon in Scorpio, Taurus. So that moon comes around, and now it's going to come around for that third quarter square, Aquarius, okay, to Taurus. So this is all part of this cycle, but this cycle is part of a bigger cycle. But anyway, what I say is the first quarter, the energy goes out. We have a seed at the new moon or at any conjunction of two planets or more. Mars just hit Pluto. That was like the start of a new Mars-Pluto cycle. Okay, and these things come around and they come to that 90 degree square and we want to put something out. There's tension, wanting to manifest. And guess what? Then it does manifest. And then guess what? At the 270 degree square, it comes back at us. What goes around, comes around. And we can look at this over thousands of years. Okay? What we have been doing for thousands of years as a species is coming back. Yeah? What we've been doing for 248 years was the last time Pluto was in Capricorn. The birth of the United States in 1776. The United States is coming around to its Pluto return. Okay? And Saturn and Jupiter are approaching, okay, closing that cycle. This is like, we, we got karma coming for a couple of years is all I can say. But particularly now with Black Moon Lilith, we have the dark feminine energy. And with the full moon in Scorpio, okay, just days ago, all right, you know, if you felt that energy, this is Kali, Lilith, all right, you know, it has to do with Sekhmet, it has to do with this dark feminine energy of the dragon goddess, yeah, that is calling the masculine, okay, to stand in the truth. Now we're all masculine and feminine. On one level, okay, women can be calling men to stand in their integrity, to stand in their truth, or die. <laughs> yeah, you know, like Kali is, you know, a killer. Yeah, the snake energy is killer. The dark feminine energy is killer. Sekhmet, they all loved blood. Yeah, she got, you know, into fighting and into war and into destruction and loved it. So you got to watch out for this energy. It's very powerful. And the only way to withstand it, the only way that the masculine or the man or, you know, whatever is happening, you know, with your essence, all right, is to stand and find your roots. It is your truth. This is what Capricorn and Saturn and Pluto and Mars and Lilith, all in Capricorn. Capricorn is contracts and commitments that are going to last through time. So it's like we have to make up our mind. <laughs> this is a time to be making decisions. And when it comes time to making decisions, the thing with Uranus and Aries, Mars coming up to square that Uranus, okay, right, you know, and, you know, all of this other energy that's going on now is that we are free. We're free to choose who we want to be and what is our truth. Jupiter moving through Scorpio, yeah, trining Neptune right now is a time of letting go of old beliefs, of letting go of old truths. This was true for me, particularly with my sexual energy and my emotional energy and where my attention is going. And not only my attention, but my second attention. 
We have our attention and we have our instinctual second attention. And it's really time to awaken to this second attention. What's really driving my bus? What's really driving my life? It's coming up. It's bubbling up. Okay, the dark feminine is calling it up. Are you in alignment with your second? Is your first and second attention in alignment? Yeah? Is your upper idealism in alignment with your lower chakra instinctual energy? Just where are you in this spectrum operating from? And this is where we have free choice. And it's, and it's not so much about right or wrong. It's about who you want to be. How you want to stand in the world. This is objectivity. This is what you come into as the elder. That's what this week's mantra is about. I am old enough now, yeah, to see my fear. So what's driving the bus? Is it love or fear? Yeah? Am I, am I really afraid, okay, to expose my desires, expose my shadow, expose my truth, expose myself, be vulnerable to ridicule or rejection or judgment of others or am I going to open, you know, and just show myself as I am? I mean, this is what's humbling about Scorpio. <laughs> and Jupiter in Scorpio is lots. Jupiter's lots. <laughs> Scorpio is humbling. We're all human, okay? We've all got shadow. We all make mistakes. We all lose. What are we afraid of losing? What are we overly attached to? What are we holding on to that we're afraid to lose? This can really affect our choices and our decisions and keep us from standing as our authentic, integrated self. You see what I'm saying? So this is kind of like a test. This is a test. Capricorn and Saturn are testing us. Lilith and the Dark Feminine are testing us. And if we think we can keep our mask on, okay, if we think that we can keep, you know, everything as is and our reputation and our job and our relationships and our this and that, and we can keep everything as it is and fight this dragon without tapping into deeper levels of consciousness, deeper levels of, of our source of energy, the red force, the kundalini, the chi, yeah? So this is a time where we need to dig deep down. And that's the thing, who am I, right? We have to find, it. it's like, sure, you're going to fight the dragon and you're going to win and you will be blessed and the dragon, you'll be able to tame that dragon, ride that dragon and have more power than ever before. Sexual, financial, intellectual, I mean, you can have it all. You can ride that dragon. As long as you know your truth. So that's the challenge now. The challenge is to dig deep down under all the recesses and the rocks and turn this over and turn that over. And is this, you know, is this my truth? Is that my truth? Just what is my truth? And this is where we call in love. This is where the Jupiter trine Neptune comes in. Yeah, and Venus even coming around through Gemini, okay, you know, she wants to take that Venus conjunct Neptune, comes around to the first square. She's, she got, you know, this is, Neptune is divine love, Neptune is earthly love, yeah? So we had this Venus-Neptune conjunction, okay, a couple months ago, and now, three months ago, and now she's coming around, and it's time to manifest 
the 90 degree square. Time to manifest that divine love through our earthly physical relationships and communicate honestly where we are, who we are, what we want, what we value, what's important to us, and what's not. Yeah? So this is like really, it can be very exciting. This can be a time where we go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And this Neptune is magical. Okay, and we know that, you know, Gemini also has to do with the magician. And then we've got that sun coming into this opposition with Jupiter. Yeah, Taurus, Scorpio, anything can happen. It can be super beautiful. It can be really amazing. Or we cannot find our truth. We cannot stand in our truth. We can want to have it all. And here's the other thing where the choice comes in. And I just want to, I think I said it in last week's report, right? There's vibrational levels. What kind of man do you want to be? What kind of woman do you want to be? First of all, you, you find out where you are. And then Capricorn says, I, I want you to get bigger. Yeah, I want you to, you know, be more. I want you to mature. So then it's like, okay, wow, I got to, you know, like raise the bar here for myself. I got to raise my vibration. And this is where the meditation comes in. Where you have to seek and, and you know, really be still and be centered to know which vibrational level you're at, where you're tapping in, and where you want to tap in. And that is then when you really tap in fully, wholly, and completely, spirit. It's like when you make a decision and a commitment and a choice and you put your intention in a straight line and with self-discipline and control you focus on that boom, Mars and Capricorn, this is what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, the whole universe, ascended masters, angels, saints, whatever you, you know, whatever you believe in, right? The whole universe lines up behind you to bring it, to manifest it, and to give it. So that's where there's a little bit of pressure. A little bit of pressure, you know, it's like, well, okay, yeah. Uh, what am I what am I asking the whole universe to line up behind me for? <laughs> you know? <laughs> what is the goal? What do I really want? Yeah. I'm doing this workshop here. I'm having everybody write their obituary. <laughs> it's the first time. Just came to me the other night with that Scorpio full moon. You know? Let, let's write our obituary. Let's let's, you know, project ourselves into the future of what they're gonna say about us when we're dead. How far did you get? What did you do? Did you fall down? Did you tame the dragon? Did the dragon eat you? Check it out, man. <laughs> Could be something to look into. Anyway, the mantra for today, the mantra for this week. I am now old enough to see my fear and not let it hold me back. For I have seen the power of love pull a rabbit out of a hat. The rabbit out of the hat is the old trick of the magician. There is magic. Yeah? Magic lives, magic is alive. Spirit, you know, works miracles. Miracles freaking happen, yeah? And when you're all in alignment and the universe, you know, is like behind that intention and that intention is in alignment with a bigger intention, okay? I mean, this is like when the domino effect makes it happen. So, Go for it, stand in that core, make that commitment, line up your energy sh chakras and centers and freaking blast off, man. <laughs> I'm old enough now to see my fears and not let them hold me back. For I have seen the power of love 
pull a rabbit out of a hat. Namaste. May you pull many rabbits out of your hats. <laughs> Aloha, so much love. <laughs>